Hello, this is Andrew Perkins, and this is part one in using CakePHP's auth component. I've created a new application to demonstrate the auth component. Uh, it's just a blank installation of the CakePHP framework, but it's all set up and ready to go. I called it Cake Auth. I created a new database called Cake Auth, and it has two tables. We have a posts table, which should be familiar to you, it has an ID field, title, content, and a user underscore ID so that we can uh, relate posts to users. This is a foreign key following CakePHP's naming conventions by calling it user underscore ID. It'll relate posts to users. In our users table, we have an ID field, int type, auto increment, primary key. We have a name field to hold the user's real name, a username field, a password field, Note that it is at least 40 characters in length. The auth component will hash the password that the user enters in and store it as a 40 character encrypted string, so you need to have enough room to store it. I also have a roles field here to set a user's role. By default, when a user registers, their role will be set as regular user. The auth component requires that you have a table called users, an ID field, a username and password field. You could change all of that but I find it best just to follow the naming conventions and stick to these names and everything works properly. So I used the bake script which I covered a few videos back to bake out my models, views, and controllers for both of those tables. So I have full crud views here in my application already generated by the bake script. Here's for users, we can add a new user. We currently don't have any users but we can list the posts, we can view, edit, and delete posts as well. So if you don't know how to use the bake script, please refer to my previous videos. Otherwise, we'll get started. Let's add some authentication to this application. What we need to do is inside of our app controller, enable the auth component. I like to do this inside of the app controller. The app controller uh, is the controller that all of your other controllers inherit from, so it's a good place to put any site-wide logic. So I'll create a new file in the app in the app folder called app underscore controller dot php, and it is a class called app controller, and that extends the controller. And we just need to enable the auth component. So we'll create a attribute here called components set that equal to an array and tell it to use the auth component. I'm also going to enable the session component for session flash, me flash messages. So by default the auth component automatically locks down access to all of your controllers and all of its actions I mean. So if we try to access our posts index action we can see that it redirected us to user slash login we currently don't have the login view created yet, or even the action, but we can see that the auth component is working. It's saying we don't have access, and it's taking us to the login page, and it wants us to log in in order to be able to go to that page. So we need to tell the auth component which pages are allowed to be accessed without being logged in. The best place to do that is inside of a before filter. A before filter is a CakePHP function that will run before any of your other actions are executed. So I'll create a function called before filter, and we can use the auth components allow method. We can say this auth allow index and view. This will allow all index actions and all view actions, so users can view those without being logged in. Let's try it out. We should be able to go to users index, posts index and we should be able to view as well. If we try to edit, it redirects us to log in and wants us to log in. So the auth component is working. We can also set some of its properties. We can tell the auth component what its auth error message should be. We can say, please log in to view that page. This error message will be displayed when a user tries to access a page that they're not allowed to be on. We can also set the auth error or the auth component's login error message. 
and this is the message someone will see whenever they have a login error. We can say incorrect username password combination. Save that. We can also set the auth components uh, login redirect and log out redirect. This will tell the auth component where the user should be redirected whenever they log in or log out. and just set that equal to an array and you pass in key value pairs of the controller and action that they should be redirected to. So we'll redirect the posts controller and its index action. I can copy this and change that to be log out redirect. So whenever a user logs in or logs out they'll be redirected to the posts index action. So now we want to make sure that users can register. Our register page is going to be the user's add action. If we try to go there, the auth component doesn't allow us. It wants us to log in. So we need to enable or allow the add action of the user's controller. If we put add in here, that's going to allow all of our controller's add action to be accessed we want it specific to the users controller. So under controllers, open up userscontroller.php and we're just going to add on to the app controllers before filter. We can do that by restating function before filter here and we want to have all of the current before filters logic or settings so we just need to call its parent and now we can just add on more that's specific to this user's controller. We want to tell the auth component to allow our add action. So we still have access to index and view in all of our controllers, but the user's controller also allows the add action. So let's try it. Go to users slash add. And there we go. Users can now register. Uh, we do want to make a few changes to this view though. We want to make sure that users confirm their password. So we need a password confirmation text box here or input field here as well. And we also want to hide this roles field. We only want the roles field to be displayed if an administrator is logged in. We don't want users to set their own role. So we need to edit the users views. So under views, users open up add.ctp and let's change this to say register and let's enable off component flash messages so we can echo out session flash and I will copy this and inside of here we want to display auth error messages and I'll paste it and we can display regular flash messages as well save that. So let's now add the password confirmation field or input. So I'm going to copy the password one and paste here and we'll change this to be confirmation. Now the helper knows that we have a password field in our database and since the auth component's set up and everything it'll display this input field as a password by default it does not know that password confirmation should be a password so we need to tell it. The input method can take a second parameter it's an array of HTML options so we can set this input fields type to be password. Save that and if we go back here we can refresh and we're getting our auth messages here because we just enabled the auth messages to display so when we tried to access our uh, actions that were not allowed to be accessed it's displaying that auth error message from that time but if we refresh that'll go away there we go so our password confirmation is showing up and it is displayed as a password we just need to hide roles from non-logged in administrators we can do that by checking. We can say if admin indent this 
and save it. So admin will return true or false if we have an administrator logged in. If an admin is logged in, it'll display this roles field so an admin can register a new user and set his role or her role. If an admin is not logged in, the roles field will not even be created. So we need to enable this functionality. I'm going to do it inside of our app controller. I will create a private function. To create a private function, just use an underscore before its name, and I'll call it is admin. And we'll return true or false if we have an administrator logged in. We'll give the admin variable a default value of false, and then we'll check if this auth user this auth user returns true or false if we have an user logged in. We can also check one of its one of the user tables fields. We're checking our role field here and we can check whether or not it's equal to something. So here we're checking if we have a logged in user whose role is equal to admin. You can hear the quails outside my window. Uh, so if we do have a administrator logged in we can set the admin variable equal to true and then we just need to return admin. Now we need to send this true or false value to our view so we can use it. Inside of our before filter we will use the set method and we will set a variable called admin and it'll hold the return value of our is admin function. Is admin returns true or false if an administrator is logged in. That true or false value is stored in a variable called admin and sent to our views which we're using here to check if we have an administrator logged in and to display the roles input field. So let's try it out. Since I'm not logged in as an administrator, if I refresh, roles should disappear. There we go, it works. I also want to use this same functionality inside of our users edit view. So I'm going to open up views users edit.ctp and I can just paste right over top of these. Save that. And that way the edit page will have a password confirmation and it only displays roles. Oops, need to delete that second part there. It only displays roles if an admin's logged in. So we'll save that. And let's just make sure everything's still working. Looks like it is. All right. And so in the next video, we will finish up the register. We need to make a few changes to how the register works. Uh, the auth component by default will hash this password field as soon as we submit it. That makes it difficult to use our model validations to compare the password field to the password confirmation field. Password will come in as a 40 character string. Password confirmation will still be the regular password that the user entered in and they won't match. Uh, it also makes it difficult to use validations to apply a maximum length to the password field since it's going to come in as 40 characters you can't limit users passwords to just 14 or 12 characters or something so we'll be overwriting uh, the auth components hash passwords method to make it work and I will see you in the next video